The wildest park in Disney World has rides you're not going to find anywhere else. But is that good news for your upcoming trip or are those rides going to be a little bit too out there for you? Let's find out together here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Today we're heading to the depths of Africa, Asia, Dino Land USA, and Pandora World of Avatar to see which rides will be worth your time and which ones you're going to be better off skipping in Disney's Animal Kingdom. Keep in mind that all ride rankings are completely subjective and won't include any shows or attractions, so no score out of 10 for Finding Nemo the Big Blue and Beyond or Festival of the Lion King. Though I'm going to be honest, Festival of the Lion King would rank real high up, but that's neither here nor there. Now, once you've watched the entire ride ranking series, let us know which park has the best of the best rides for you. And though Disney's Animal Kingdom has the least amount of rides in its park, it has some of my all-time favorites, so it might possibly grab that number one spot for me, but let me talk about them first before I decide. I'll also be talking about the My Disney Experiences planning tool, Disney Genie Plus, and how this extension of the app can best be used around the park. So if you're not super familiar with that premium line bypassing lightning lane system, I'll link our ultimate Disney Genie guide from the DFB website in the description down below for you to check out later. Let's start in the most controversial area across all the Disney World parks that you'll either love or hate. That's right, it's Dinoland USA. Now, this is the dino-themed parking lot carnival, Dinoland USA. Is it inappropriate to add the Jurassic Park soundtrack here? probably. Now this area in the back of the park used to be the home of three dino themed rides, but some folks are still mourning the loss of primeval world, including me, RIP to the spinning coaster that gave me a headache after each ride. It was still awesome though. Now we're down to two rides that might just be as controversial as the dino land area itself. First up is Triceratops Spin. You know, Dumbo, the flying elephant at Magic Kingdom and the magic carpets of Aladdin and Astro Orbiter. Triceratops Spin is basically those, but with dinosaurs instead. I know, real strong start, but stick with me. I won't linger on this one much longer, and the rides only get better from here. The Triceratops Spin queue is never awful to wait in, so don't worry about timing your visit here just right. If you see a push over 20 minutes, just come back with the kids a little bit later and it should die down. You also don't have to worry about getting a Genie Plus reservation for this one, because A, there are no lightning lanes available, and B, again, it's never a bad wait. Probably shot myself in the foot there. Now you're going to go over to Triceratops spin and find out it's an hour long queue and I lied straight to your face. And if that's the case, I'm sorry. And if Triceratops spins wait is an hour while you're in the animal kingdom, it's time to leave Disney World that day because it's way too crowded. All right, pros for this one. Best for kids who absolutely love dinosaurs, but maybe too frightened by the next entry on this list. And there's never a long wait, meaning you can get on it pretty easy peasy. So if you're there with your toddler and you know they're going to love this, then you kind of have to do it. It's the law. Cons. If you You've ridden Dumbo, you've already ridden the better version of this ride. And it's kind of dull. Sorry, not sorry. But sometimes we as moms and dads and parents need to make sacrifices. Overall, Triceratops Spin gets a 4 out of 10. All right, now it's time to scare the pants off of all of us at Dinosaur. This is a way more intense dino themed ride. In the very back of Dino Land USA, you're going to find Dinosaur. It's a thrill ride where you're sent into the prehistoric era via Time Rover to track down an iguanodon for Dr. Seeker for science reasons. Now, this isn't a roller coaster, but it's also not your average slow going dark ride. You're going to be jostled around the track. You're basically in kind of like a Jeep like vehicle. There are quick turns, bumps in the road and you know casually dodging a meteor or two no biggie in all seriousness this ride can be very intense for kids and it's also very intense for aj's i am terrified of this ride i cannot ride it and when i do i close my eyes and cover my ears and i can ride indiana jones just fine which is the basically the same ride over in disneyland with a different theme but i cannot ride this now you got a lot of flashing lights really loud sounds and in your face dinosaurs, like a Carnotaurus that's gonna start thinking that you're looking like a snack. Now you can get a lightning lane reservation for this one, but the wait time usually isn't too bad. It'll be longer than Triceratops spin for sure, but all in all, the average wait time here is gonna run you 25 to 35 minutes. Not to mention the wait time is indoors. Hooray for AC in the rather neat looking Dino Institute queue where Bill Nye might pop in on the intercom and talk to you about the dawn of civilization and stuff like that. So even if you find yourself waiting a bit longer for this one, I wouldn't stress too much about it. Just don't wait over an hour here. The queue should go down later in the evening, but 
it's always going to be at its least busy at the very beginning of the day. So pros for dinosaurs, best for those looking for a very intense dark ride. This is probably one of the most intense dark rides in Disney World, but there's no drops, no corkscrews, no upside down motions like a full on coaster. And if you're looking for epic prehistoric theming, those dinos really make me feel like I'm not going to make it. We're not going to make it. We made it. All right, cons, not best for the kids or even adults like me who aren't fans of flashing lights, loud sounds, and in your face surprise dinosaurs. If you're more of a fan of the slow going dark rides, don't be fooled. You will be jerked around every corner, kind of like Test Track and Epcot minus the high speed part. Overall though, Dinosaur gets a seven out of 10. All right, the next land we're gonna jump into is Bria's favorite. And she says she'll be taking no further questions at this time. It is one of my favorites too, but probably not my absolute favorite in Animal Kingdom. We'll get to that later. All right, Pandora World of Avatar. Even if James Cameron's film Avatar isn't your favorite movie of all time, that's okay. It doesn't have to be for you to appreciate Pandora World of Avatar. It's an area of Disney's Animal Kingdom with floating mountains, cheeseburger pods, and mind-bending rides. I'm interested to hear if the first ride we talk about in this section is one you'll find highly underrated or highly overrated, because honestly, it's a bit controversial. That's right, Navi River Journey. I'm gonna go ahead and say my beef with Navi River Journey right from the start. It's way too short. This boat ride through Pandora's bioluminescent rainforest is super, super peaceful. It's like meditative, y'all. The colors are gorgeous. The music is relaxing. The animal ambiance coming from the different Pandoran creatures is soothing. And the screen-based images work seamlessly along with the glowing setting. And let's not forget the star of the journey, the shaman animatronic at the very end that's so impressive. However, every time I see the shaman appear as my boat rounds the final corner, I'm always like, already? Didn't I just board this boat? The ride is five minutes long, which sure, it's fine for a roller coaster, but for a slow going ride where you want to take in as much of the surrounding scenery as possible, you don't get nearly enough time to just enjoy it all. Honestly, I do want to start a petition for making this ride like 15 minutes longer, like a 20 minute ride through Navi River Journey would be a dream come true, especially after a long day with your kids in Animal Kingdom. <laughs> That's like the perfect, like going into one of those sensory deprivation chambers, you know, like just give me 10 minutes. <laughs> I just need 10 minutes. Okay, sorry. Too much parent juju coming out there. But the big problem with this is that it feels even shorter when you've waited 45 plus minutes for this one in a queue that can feel very stuffy after a while. So Navi River Journey isn't a bad ride to grab a lightning lane reservation for, but if you don't use Genie Plus, you can usually jump in line for this one towards the end of the day for a potentially shorter wait. Now pros, of course, best for those who love easy going dark rides. Anyone can ride this, kids are gonna love it. It's a beautiful bioluminescent, with one of the most impressive Disney animatronics of all time. And I'm not joking when I say it's truly meditative. Now cons, not best for those who don't wanna wait in a potentially really long line for a super short boat ride. And if the animatronic isn't working during your ride through, you'll get the screen-based version of the shaman instead. And that's disappointing if you kinda of know what you're missing. Overall, Navi River Journey, seven out of 10 as well. Interesting. Dinosaurs is seven out of 10, Navi River Journey is a seven out of 10, but they get their sevens for totally different reasons, right? Now looking for a longer Pandora ride where you're gonna play a direct role in the journey, then you are gonna prepare yourself right now for Avatar Flight of Passage. Now this is the ride that most people say is the best ride in Animal Kingdom, so here we go. Avatar Flight of Passage is a screen-based 3D ride that places you on the back of your own Banshee to fly across the plains of Pandora alongside the Navi. Have you ever ridden Soren in Epcot. So that's the most similar comparison we can make. It's kind of like that, except you're sitting on a bike kind of thing. And there's a lot more fantasy elements and there's more thrills, but they use a lot of the same kind of screen-based technology. And this one's 3D. So you're gonna fly across rampaging animals, zoom through swirling water tunnels, come face to face with some of Pandora's more aggressive creatures, and take a moment to immerse yourself in a fluorescent cavern while a swelling soundtrack gives you absolute goosebumps. Again, another period of time that I need to petition that we just sit there for like 15 minutes. 
Now, Flight of Passage is the hottest attraction in Animal Kingdom, so if you want to use your early theme park entry benefit, which you'll receive if you're staying at one of the Disney-owned resorts, then you can get in line for this ride 30 minutes before the park officially opens and beat some of the more intense crowds that'll flood this way just as soon as the park opens to the public. Because Flight of Passage is so popular, you won't be able to grab a Lightning Lane for this one from the regular Genie Plus tool. Instead, you're going to have to purchase an individual Lightning Lane entrance, which is Disney's a la carte version version of the Lightning Lane benefit for their most popular rides on property. Now, individual Lightning Lanes, or ills as we call them here, have a fluctuating price per person per ride. So if this ride is super important for you to experience and minimize your wait time for, then it might be something you want to look into before your visit. Don't forget, you can buy those individual Lightning Lanes at 7 a.m. each day. And you don't have to buy the regular Disney Genie to buy an individual Lightning Lane. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can always jump in line for the standby queue early on in the day or even later in the evening before the park closes. The wait times might still be lengthy, but they aren't horrible. Not to mention the queue is pretty entertaining to weave your way through, and it'll take you past the floating mountains, bioluminescent areas, and a full-on laboratory complete with a Navi avatar resting in suspended animation inside a large water-filled tube. By the way, a special tip for this one is because everybody thinks Animal Kingdom is a half-day park and it's one of the parks that opens the earliest, they go there first, they do all the stuff, and then they're out of there by two o'clock when it's time for park hopping. So if you're in Animal Kingdom a little bit later, like maybe 6 p.m., 7 p.m., then this ride line might be a little bit shorter during not super heavy crowd times. Lots of caveats there, but I hope it's helpful. All right, pros on this one. Best for those looking for an escapism ride. This truly feels like you're on another planet. And it's very immersive from the queue to the pre-show to the ride itself. Cons, it's not best for those who get motion sickness real easily or have an intense fear of heights. Some folks complain about the 3D seeming off during their ride. Depending on where you're seated, your ride through might seem blurrier than normal. Overall though, we're gonna give this one a nine out of 10. Time to head out of Pandora and into a section of Disney's Animal Kingdom with rides you'll either love or be fully traumatized by. Toss of a coin, really. We're going to Asia. Now, this is definitely my favorite area of Animal Kingdom. I could definitely hang out in the Asia section of Animal Kingdom all day long without stepping foot on one of the rides and still have a truly incredible day. In fact, I have. This is one of those places that I go to just de-stress and decompress. This is a part of Disney World that to me is really relaxing, especially those animal trails, which we don't get to talk about here because we're only ranking rides, but those animal trails, like the Maharaja Jungle Trek, one of my absolute favorite places to hang out. That said, one of the rides featured here is truly one of a kind and highly worth a visit. Well, at least one of them is. Not so sure about the other one. We're gonna start with Kali River Rapids. If you're looking for a family river rafting ride in one of the Disney World parks, well, here it is. Kali River Rapids, the one and only. And no, I'm not counting the Disney water park, so no sass. If you've ridden a family raft ride at a different theme park outside of Disney, or if you've been on Grizzly River Run over there in Disney California Adventure, then you've definitely ridden something similar to this. It's got fast moving rapids, it's got geyser splashes, it's even got a 20 foot slope you'll speed down at the end. And of course, it's got that anti-deforestation educational aspect too, because I know you're looking for that when you're at a Disney park. Now with this one, there's a very good chance that you're gonna get extremely, extremely wet. One part of the raft goes down that drop backwards and they are just going to be completely drenched. There are also waterfalls along the way, so definitely plan to get wet on this ride. Maybe bring some dry clothes to change into. Either way, make sure you put your phone and your other electronics into Ziploc bags in your park bag. That is a must. I always have Ziploc bags with me no matter what. Now this is not a bad ride to jump on if the weight's not terrible and you're looking for a ride that will definitely cool you down from the heat. But if you find yourself waiting 40 plus minutes for this one, it is not worth it. The queue line's pretty hot to wait in because it's all outside and the ride itself isn't super memorable. You can get a lightning lane for this one, which isn't a bad idea, especially if you're wanting to prioritize this ride during the heat of the day come mid afternoon when the line will definitely be at its longest. Pros for this one, best for those who love those family raft rides. And it's not super intense, so kids 38 inches and taller should really have a good time with this one. 
Cons, not best for those who don't want to walk around with soggy shorts if they can avoid it. And it's a mid-tier water raft ride. Nothing that's going to stand out here. So I'm going to give this one a 6 out of 10. By process of elimination, you now know the next ride on this list is the ride that we think could be worth your time in the Asia section of Animal Kingdom if you can steal your nerves long enough to face the beast lurking within, of course. Get ready for the Yeti. Expedition Everest Legend of the Forbidden Mountain is Animal Kingdom's only high-speed roller coaster. After you board your vehicle, as you're leisurely making your way up the Forbidden Mountain, you'll learn a little too late why exactly the word forbidden probably should have set off a red flag flag in your brain way before you reach the mountain's peak. Now, you're going to have to tango with the Yeti, who's so not thrilled that you've invaded his home. So brace yourself for intense turns, steep hills, and speeding around the track in total darkness with a backward section too. If you love coasters, particularly coasters with epic theming and storylines, this one will be a hit for you. But keep in mind that kids who are 44 inches or taller might be rather intimidated by the idea of coming face to face with a towering Yeti that's tearing apart the tracks. Now, Lightning Lane works a little differently at Expedition Everest than it does at all the other attractions around the park. When Disney Genie was first introduced last year, Expedition Everest was released as an individual Lightning Lane entrance. But from now until August 7th, you can get a Lightning Lane for Expedition Everest under the regular Genie Plus purchase instead of as an a la carte one. Confused? I understand. <laughs> Basically, until August 7th, 2022, you don't have to pay extra for Expedition Everest. You just have to have your regular Genie Plus purchase. Either way, though I enjoy this ride a lot, I still don't think it's one I'd immediately prioritize a lightning lane for. First of all, the line doesn't usually get too terribly long. An average wait time for Expedition Everest ranges around 20 to 30 minutes. So if you see the line get into that 40 minute plus range, just wait it out a bit, grab yourself a Joffrey's tea, stroll around the Maharaja jungle track, and come back later. The free version of the Disney Genie app should be able to show you forecasted wait times for Expedition Everest and the other rides around the park, and that'll give you a better idea of when the queue times are going to start to die down. Again, it's usually going to be after 2 p.m. Now, here's another tip. Expedition Everest has a third queue line option available, the single rider line. So if you want to cut down your weight and you don't mind your group being broken up when you ride this ride, there's always another free option you can consider. Now, one little warning that I have about Expedition Everest, I used to be able to ride this ride like seven times in a row, even after a margarita or two. I cannot do that anymore. It really bothers my stomach when we do that backwards section. So just a heads up, if you do get motion sickness easily, then be a little bit more careful with this ride, especially that backwards section, be prepared for it. All right, pros on this one for the thrill ride enthusiasts in Animal Kingdom and fantastic theming with storytelling throughout. Cons on this one, not the best for kids who might be super intimidated by the dark and scary features here. Definitely not the greatest first coaster experience ever. Disco Yeti is great and all, we call him Disco Yeti because, well, long story short, he doesn't work the way the Imagineers wanted him to work and it's gonna cost too much to fix him, so they just shine a strobe light on him to make him look like he's actually moving. So you're kind of getting a less than perfect version of this ride when you ride it, but what can you do? Overall, this one gets a nine out of 10. Now, you know what I love about Animal Kingdom? You can jump from one continent to the next within minutes. So let's jump from Asia and into the next Animal Kingdom continent, Africa. You're here at the section of Animal Kingdom with the most animal-centric rides of them all. So get ready to throw on your safari hat and channel your inner wilderness explorer for these wildlife experiences. Of course, we're gonna go start with Kilimanjaro safaris. You know what I really love about Kilimanjaro safaris? You can have an entire zoo day all packed into an 18 minute Jeep ride. During the course of this safari tour, you're gonna get to see over 34 species of live animals on Disney's very own African savanna, assuming those animals are, you know, interested in hanging out with you, because sometimes they're not. <laughs> but this features wildlife like giraffe, hippos, lions, elephants, rhinos, flamingos. Every once in a while, you'll see a cheetah but mostly won't. And because this is a ride through with real animals, you're gonna have a different experience every time. Sometimes a rhino is gonna step out in front of your vehicle and he's not gonna move and you're just gonna have to sit there for a while. <laughs> Now, I'd suggest getting in line for this one when it's a bit cooler out or when there's a light rainstorm happening because the animals are going to be more active when it's cooler, like early in the morning or at dusk or when it's raining. Otherwise, they're going to be hiding away or sleeping when the Orlando sun is relentless. 
Did you know they actually have an air-conditioned rock for the lions to lay on so that you see them every once in a while? It's true. So Kilimanjaro Safaris does have a lightning lane, so if you did purchase Genie Plus for the day, I definitely recommend Genie Plusing this one because waiting in that line can be really, really hot. It's an all outdoor line. Pros for this one, best for those who wanna see as many animals as possible in one go, and it's a nice relaxing Jeep tour that's different each time you ride. Cons, it's not best for those who are trying to get one more ride in before a dining reservation. Unlike Navi River Journey, this one takes more time. It's gonna be at least 20 minutes out there in the Jeep, and maybe more if that rhino doesn't wanna move. And if you hit this ride up when it's too hot, you may not get to see as many animals as you would when the temperatures are cooler. So definitely stick more to morning hours or evening hours. Overall, this gets an eight out of 10. And now for a ride lots of guests tend to miss completely simply because they don't know it's there. The Wildlife Express Train. The Walt Disney World Railroad and Magic Kingdom might still be down for the count, but the super underrated Wildlife Express Train at Disney's Animal Kingdom continues continues to chug right along. This one is a seven minute journey over to Rafiki's Planet Watch. And the train ride is the only way you can get to Rafiki's Planet Watch, which is an area where you'll be able to visit a petting zoo, take an animation class, and learn about the care and keeping of the animals on property at the conservation station. You also may be able to see some real life vets working on animals because there's a viewable surgery in there. Now, there's not a whole lot going on with this train ride, but instead of facing forward like you would any other transportation system, you'll sit facing the left side of the track and get to see sneak peeks of the park's animal facilities. There's also an in-ride narrator that'll tell you some fun facts about the importance of animals and their impact on Walt Disney's animation career. No lightning lanes to worry about here, so all aboard. Pros, best for those trying to get to Rafiki's Planet Watch, because there's literally no other way to get there. And it's easy going. Gives you seven minutes to get off your aching feet. This is also a really, really good one if you have little kids, because like I said, petting zoo, that's fun. They get to watch animals being worked on potentially. And there's definitely some cool places to explore over there. So this is a good way to take up a little bit of that park time with your little ones. Now, cons for this one, not best for those who have no interest in visiting Rafiki's Planet Watch. If you've got other things to do in Animal Kingdom, you need to skip this one. There's nothing super thrilling here, but the behind the scenes stuff is kinda cool. Overall, this is a seven out of 10. Okay, now it's time for a super speedy overview. Disney's Animal Kingdom might have the least amount of rides throughout the four parks, but the rides they do have feature something for everyone. You've got slow going rides, you've got thrills, you've got water rides, safari tours, and don't forget your little therapy ride there at Navi River Journey. Though we definitely wouldn't complain if more rides were added to Animal Kingdom sometime in the near or far future, there are still plenty of shows, walking trails, shops, and restaurants to explore right now to help fill your time here. So you don't have to worry about waiting in massive ride lines all day long, which after visiting Magic Kingdom and Disney's Hollywood Studios should be refreshing. Like I said, Animal Kingdom is the park I go to to decompress and to relax and to feel a little bit more at peace than maybe I do at those more rambunctious and go, go, go parks. So speaking of massive ride lines though, if I were being completely honest, this may be the last park I'd choose to purchase Disney Genie Plus. Out of the eight rides I talked about today, only five of them are available to reserve on Genie Plus, and once August comes around, Expedition Everest will be taken off that list potentially too. So weigh your options before making that day of Genie Plus purchase and see if it'll be worth it for you and your group. Honestly, what I would do here is probably book that individual lightning lane for Flight of Passage. And then just make smart decisions about getting in certain lines a little bit earlier or a little bit later for those other popular rides. All right, so we did it. We ranked all the rides throughout all the Disney World parks. If you haven't watched our other videos where we rank rides, go check those out right now. We've got them in a playlist for you. And I have such a blast talking about these rides because I love, love, love giving those tips and tricks, but also just talking about some of my favorite places in the world. So thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop your favorites in Animal Kingdom down there in the comments. And what are your rankings for these rides? Because as you know, it definitely helps our other viewers when you give them your experiences, your anecdotes, and your suggestions. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.